Hello, my name is Crystal and I am a compulsive book shopper. I have a serious problem and I need rehab. So that being said, I have a library haul of books that I bought from my local library. I'm sitting here taking my shoes off like I'm Mr. Rogers. <laughs> I just got in and I thought it was freezing outside and I had actually went out in a sweatshirt and had a hoodie and I'm like sweating my ass off for real. So I got this big bag of books. You won't believe the price that I paid for them in total. You like won't believe it. I will tell you at the end. And I got some really, really good buys. But before I get into the books, I just have to specify that I was up till 2.30 in the morning reading, watching, eating. I'm a little more than halfway finished. And I'm loving that book. Her friend Heather... It's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Okay, on to the library hall. I got Forever by Judy Bloom, which is about two high school sweethearts who fall in love and they have to make an important decision. Um, I don't know what the decision is, of course, because I haven't read the book, but I honestly think that the girl is pregnant. That's just my theory. And this is only like 190 pages, so I should finish this in like no time. Oh, we have a sale coming up. And I'm going to be right there, October 24th. I'm going to be there. They're going to have tons of books. I'm going to be there. Um, and the next book that I got, I heard a lot about. So a lot of these books I got because I was somewhat interested and... I heard about them and I heard that they were good reads. So I got that. I also got Kite Runner by Khalid Hassani. Hassani. Um, let's see. Tell the story about redeeming love. Um, sorry if you hear noise in my background. That's the neighbor's going into their apartment so it says a powerful book no frills no nonsense just hard spare prose an intimate account of family and friendship betrayal and salvation that requires no atlas or translation to engage and enlighten us part of the kite runner parts of the kite runner are raw and excruciating to read yet the book is entirely and yet the book in its entirety is lovingly written so, I look forward to reading this one day. Yeah. If anyone's read it, let me know. Come on, RJ. Up. Come on. Get up here. Don't you play with my bag. Come on. Up. <laughs> He's like, Mommy, what did you get? The next book that I got is called Reading in the Brain. The New Science of How We Read by Stanislas Dehain, Dehaney, author of The Number Sense. So I really just got this for the title, um, Learning Why We Read. It says, bring together the cognitive, the cultural, and the neurological in an elegant, compelling narrative. So uh, this sound sounded good. The act of reading is so easily taken for granted that we forget what an astounding feat it is. How can a few black marks on white paper evoke an entire universe of meanings? It's even more amazing when we consider that we read using a primate brain that evolved to serve an entirely different purpose. And this riveting investigation, Stanislas D. Hine, however you pronounce the name, I'm sorry, <laughs> explores every aspect of this human invention from its origins to its neutral underpinnings. A world authority uh, on the subject, Dehaene reveals the hidden logic of spelling, describes pioneering research on how we process languages, and takes us into a new appreciation of the brain and its wondrous capacity to adapt. Wow. 
So I think it's interesting to learn like how we read, why we read, and you know, all that jazz. And this book is like 320 pages. Oh, what is in here? You always find gems <laughs> in library books. Somebody did a crossword puzzle. And then the second side is empty, so I guess that's for me to do. <laughs> Too funny. Alright, as soon as he tries to go into the bag again, I'm gonna show you guys. Okay, he's over it. <laughs> the next book that I got is by Anne Hood. It is not the one that Jen from Reading with Pugs is reading um, for her read-a-thon or read-along, but I found this, and I was like, wow, and it is called Do Not Go Gentle by Anne Hood. Um, RJ, it's just your reflection. Um, this book is about, okay, I think this is about, like, her life, um, she talks about the death of her father from cancer, so, this is interesting. I was reading a little bit on the back. They have like a passage from the book and her dad is like, you know, you want to be a writer, definitely go ahead and do that whether I'm living or not. Um, like fulfill your dreams. So I think that this is based on a truth, her true story. So yeah, interesting. I think that's the same Anne Hood, I'm sure, yeah. Very cool. The next book that I got is by Philippa Gregory. It's called The Other Bellinian Girl. And it is definitely an old copy. Um, I want to collect her books. And it's funny that I... Oh my god, look at that text. Oh, it's funny that I want to collect her stuff. And I have yet to read it. But everybody's like, oh, she's a great writer. She's a great writer. And I hope that I like her work. Because I have like four of her books right now. Um, so this one is about Henry the Eighth, I believe. Um, he loves bags. RJ, get out, get out, get out of the. You gonna fall over with the bag? Stop. Um, sorry, <laughs> sorry. So, uh, Mary falls in love with both her golden prince and her growing role as an unofficial queen. However, she soon realizes just how much she is pawn in the family's ambitious plots as the king's interests begin to wane and she is forced to step aside for her best friend and rival, her sister Anne. Then Mary knows that she must defy her family and her king and take her fate into her own hands, into her own hands. Wow, a rich and compelling tale of love, sex, ambition, and intrigue, the other Bellinian girl introduces a woman of extraordinary determination and desire who lived at the heart of the most exciting and glamorous court in Europe and, survi and survived by following her own heart. Okay. That actually sounds really good. Stop it, boy! He's jumping at my hand because I'm digging into the bag. Okay, the next one that I got is by Michael Collins. It is called Death of a Writer. I honestly only got this because of the title and because I'm a writer. So, sorry guys, my brush one. So yeah, wow. I never heard of Michael Connolly, but um, explores the price of fame, the turmoil of academic life, and the precarious position of literary of literature in American society. Um, when a campus visit from a rival author now superstar tips his Melise into desperation death seems the only remaining option wow 
so this author is in a wheelchair somehow um is barely in a conscious state and an unpublished novel is discovered in his basement and it's the story about a child murder interesting sounds good sounds very interesting definitely a psychological thriller and the next book that I got is Blue Shoe by Anne Lamont. I will collect everything Anne Lamont. I've only read one of her books, which is um, Bird by Bird. And I read Word by Word, and I absolutely loved it. I will get anything of hers. Like, absolutely anything. And this is in, like, great condition. Would you stop it? He hates when I go in his bag to get a book. He jumps up and tries to jump into the bag. The next book that I got is called Aha's Wife um, or The Stargazer by Senna Jeter Nashland. This sounded really, really interesting because it was about a girl who was married. Um... Let's see what else. It has family drama, adventure, um, talks about marriage. Where is the synopsis? Let me see. I'll read a review. One of the best books of the year. Okay. Winner of the Alabama Library Association Award for Fiction. Oh, she's a recipient of the Harper Lee Award too. This is a this is truly a grand adventure story whose heroine survives on her intellect and courage. USA Today said that. So yeah, this looked really really good. Um, I've never read anything by her. If anyone has, let me know. Okay. The next book that I got is P.S. I Love You by Cecilia Ahern. Um, I heard that this was a really, really good book. It's about a married couple who are young. Once they turn 30, um, the husband is diagnosed with an illness. And I believe he passes away and sends her on, like, a quest. I, I don't know whether it's to find herself or to kind of, like, get over the grief of losing him. So, yeah, this sounds really, really good. And I heard a lot about it on booktube. Uh -huh. There's a post. You can tell a book is old when they still have the postcards in there. <laughs> that's pretty cool. It talks about our next book, too. So that's like great promotion as well. Go ahead, Cecilia. I ain't mad at you. Now, in this next book, I cannot believe that I found it not necessarily in a well I couldn't believe that I found it in the library but I really couldn't believe that I found it in a library for a dollar Amber from Amber Eats Books you are gonna be like what watch I bought the first book Amber you read the first book and I found the second book I don't know how I'm gonna read it but The Broken Eye, Brent Weeks. This is the second book in this series. Hardcover. Massive. Good God. Look at that. This is, it got to, I'm going to guesstimate and say it's a thousand pages. Oh, no. It feels like a thousand pages. It looks like a thousand pages. Is actually 793 pages. Seriously? Look, a dollar. I mean, the hardcover is a little bent and damaged. Like, somebody who must have read this, like, took off the dust jacket. And I don't blame them. I would have, too. But look at pretty. How pretty that is. Um, I definitely would have done the same thing. And no, I'm trying to get it back in here. Okay. 
So yeah. Wow, it's been 15 minutes. Okay, so that was my library haul. So I got, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten books. For ten books, I paid ten dollars. I, I like, in my mind, with this purchase, I have won the lottery because this by itself was was uh twenty eight dollars for this hardcover. Ten bucks for all of my books. <sighs> I'm excited. I don't know when the hell I'm gonna read these books, but I'm going to read them. I really, really am. Like, while I'm not working, my goal is to really get popping with my reading because I have time. Like, I have the time to get it accomplished. I do have a novel I need to finish, schoolwork, all that jazz. But I'm going to read. And I got homework to do now that's due today. But I'm going to finish reading this first and probably put up a review and then do my homework. That is what it is. As long as my work gets done and it's like done correctly, who cares? All right, guys. Um, that is all for now. If you've read any of these books, please let me know in the comments below how you liked it. Were they good reads or whatever the case may be. And if I am not interested in any of these books by the time I reach page 50, I'm taking it back to the library. That's the good thing about, you know, going to your local library. You can donate things back if you don't like them. And you can also, like, when you do unhauls, bring your books there to donate. So that's sure. I'm sure that's what a lot of these people did that had these books. But I got some gems. All right, guys, that is all for now. Like I said, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like. If you enjoyed our conversation and want to see more of me in future works, go ahead and click that subscribe button. As always, happy Wednesday. Be blessed. Talk to you soon. Happy reading and peace.